Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. Hey everyone, so really quick, a heads up. I had to change up my recording setup just a tiny bit, so um... I might sound just a bit differently, but that doesn't mean I'm not incredibly excited about all the previews coming out. And what exciting previews and spoilers we have been getting. I mean, at the end of last week, we got a brand new, pretty much Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle in Magic with Capitec Wrecker. So if you haven't seen the episode, make sure you check it out. And speaking of references, this morning we got yet another really exciting one with Mechatan Core, which... Yeah, if you read the thumbnail in the description, uh, Megazord is most definitely here. This might be just the coolest card of all time. So of course, with all that said, let's jump into it. So Mecha Titan Core is a 2-4 artifact vehicle that costs 2 and it has crew 2. By paying 5, you exile Mechatan Core and 4 other artifact creatures and or vehicles you control to create Mecha Titan, a legendary 10-10 construct artifact creature token with flying, vigilance, trample, lifelink, and haste, that's all colors. When that token leaves the battlefield, return all cards exile with Mechatan Core except Mechatan Core to the battlefield tapped under their owner's control. So there is a lot going on in this exciting card, so let's break it down. First up, yeah, this is basically just Megazord from Power Rangers. I mean, I mean, the culmination of all things, I guess, what do they call it? Mecha Titan, when you make that token. That is essentially Megazord. You are taking, what, five, you know, separate, you know, robots, essentially, and putting them into one giant robot. And, yeah, that's essentially, what, a callback to Power Rangers, much like we've seen callbacks to, so far, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I mentioned earlier, as well as potentially even Star Fox. So, this set has some really exciting things going on. So yeah, first of all, a really cool concept for a magic card. And yeah, just a couple of things here to highlight. Number one, this is unfortunately not legendary. Well, I guess, and on top of that, unfortunately not a creature that you can use as your commander. We have seen at least, and we'll talk about it here in a bit, a potential spoiler that has can be used as your commander and it's on a vehicle and this is most definitely a vehicle that i feel like many players out there be like i really wish i could build around megazord and actually again commander is a social format so just talk to your playgroup i'm sure a lot of playgroups out there would be completely fine with you using this as your commander in fact i might be one of those players that ask my playgroup here in just a little bit about this but back to the actual writing on the card and how it was made, well, it is a low to the ground vehicle again with a very low crew cost and actually in order to actually activate it, you don't need to have it crewed, so keep that in mind. By paying 5 and exiling it and 4 other artifact creatures and or vehicles, so keep in mind that if you are using vehicles, those don't have to be crewed as well, it's, you know, counting them essentially just as vehicles that don't need to be creatures. Regardless of whatever combination of artifact creatures and or vehicles that you use, when you do that, you get that 10-10 token that's got a lot of things. Again, Flying Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, and Haste. So yeah, that is a big beater that can obviously hit really hard. And again, that's pretty flavorful being, you know, all colors and kind of pulling in a keyword from each color. But on top of that, again, when that token does leave the battlefield, once it is dealt with, you know, because it doesn't have, you know, indestructible hexproof and all those things on top of it as well, when it does leave the battlefield, you get all of your cards exile with Mecha Titan Core back, except for Mecha Titan Core. Now, that of course has a lot of implications to it, and we'll talk about some of the ways that you can actually take advantage of this here in a bit. But obviously, there's kind of that major downside to this in that once you exile Mecha Titan Core, you're not getting it back though and i will bring this up here in a bit but there are some ways around that and again also if you do convince your playgroup to let you play this as a commander obviously you can put it back in your command zone get it back out and do it again 
But again, whether you're using this as a commander after you've talked with your playgroup, or if you're using the 99 of a deck, let's talk about some cards that work really well with it and some things to consider. First up, obviously this can just fit in, you know, a vehicle tribal deck just by, you know, being a fantastic vehicle that can also utilize your other vehicles for a lot of value again by making that 1010 absolutely incredible mecha titan. So, of course, it can work well with vehicles like Smuggler's Copter, you know, a low to the ground vehicle that can also be evasive and can give you extra value. But you might want to also consider vehicles that have a extra benefit when working with mecha titan core. For example, Bomat Bazaar Barge is a 5-5 vehicle that has, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Again, when you exile Mecha Titan Core and your four other, you know, vehicles or artifact creatures with it, after your Mecha Titan, the token, goes away, you get your other vehicles or artifact creatures back. Now they come back into play tapped, and that's, you know, not all that big of a deal, but keep in mind that you are benefiting from any leave the battlefield triggers, we know, with that exile, and then, of course, when they come back into play, ETBs as well. So it can be kind of like a sneaky way to get extra value out of your ETBs, you know, when you happen to lose your token. So obviously in a similar way, this works with something like Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, which has, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals three damage to our creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. So just something to keep in mind with that interaction. Again, obviously many players out there are going to want to keep that token and play as long as they can, but when that token leaves, you can still get some extra value out of it. So obviously in a similar way, you know, again, you can either exile vehicles or artifact creatures. So there's plenty of creatures out there that are artifact creatures that have ETBs or LTBs as well. So keep those in mind as well. For example, Psalm Simulacrum, Sad Robot itself, is a 2-2 that has when it enters the battlefield it may search a library, basically and card, put that card on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And then Meteor Golem has when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent in opponent controls. And make sure you're not sleeping on the new card Circuit Mender, a 2-3 insect that has when it enters the battlefield you gain 2 life and when it leaves the battlefield draw a card. Now when I first saw this, it reminded me of that artifact fox creature, I think it was called uh, Felgree Familiar I believe, but please correct me below in the comments if I'm wrong, because it seems very similar, but the way that this one is worded is that it's a leave the battlefield trigger, not a death trigger. So obviously this still does trigger on death, but it also triggers when it's blinked too. So with this one in particular, you're getting value when it's exiled and when it comes back as well. Now on top of vehicles and artifact creatures, one other thing that you might want to consider with exiling is just, you know, something a bit quicker and easier like artifact creature tokens. So let's highlight some cards like Mere Battlesphere, Loyal Apprentice, and Sahili Sublime Artificer. Mere Battlesphere is obviously a fantastic one for multiple reasons. It's a 4-7 Mere Construct that has, when it enters the battlefield, create 4-1-1 colorless Mere Artifact Creature Tokens. So, first up, this basically just helps you meet that requirement on its own by giving you, well, in addition to this card itself, five artifact creatures. Now, with your Mecha Titan core, obviously you could just exile all the tokens, but more likely you're going to want to exile Mere Battlesphere and three of the tokens, because when Mere Battlesphere comes back after your token dies, well, you get Mere Battlesphere's ETB again to make four more Mere. So yeah, it works pretty well in tandem with Mecha Titan Core. Now, of course, there are plenty of other ways to make a lot of artifact creature tokens, like, you know, Loyal Apprentice, which has Lieutenant at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control your commander, create a 1-1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. That token gains haste until end of turn. So if this sticks around and your commander sticks around, you're going to be getting a good amount of evasive artifact creature tokens. Or in the right deck, Sahili can actually make you a lot as well. She has, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 color servo artifact creature token. In a deck with a ton of non-creature spells, this can make you an army in absolutely no time and give you plenty of fodder for your Mecha Titan core. Though, obviously, do consider that if you are exiling artifact creature tokens, you're not going to be getting them back when your Mecha Titan actually dies, but that's okay in a lot of circumstances, trading off some really small artifact creature tokens for one giant one that can hit really hard. Also, one other thing to consider with this interaction with Mecha Titan Core are clone spells, and they actually interact in different ways depending on how you want to go about it. So, for example, let's talk about Cackling Counterpart. It's going to create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Now, keep in mind, Mecha Titan Core is not legendary. And again, I did kind of say that was, you know, somewhat of a downside to some players, you know, when you want to use it as your commander. I guess it would also have to have the Can Be Your Commander text on it. Regardless, we can take advantage of the fact that it is not legendary by making a copy of it with something like Cackling Counterpart. Although, okay, keep in mind, I also mean that you have to make it into a creature first by crewing it, and then you make a copy of it, okay? 
Regardless, by doing that, then you can utilize its ability to still make your Mecha Titan and still have another Mecha Titan core sticking around. Because again, remember that I mentioned that Mecha Titan Core does not come back from exile even though all your other artifact creatures and or vehicles that it exiled do. So by making another one in advance, you can then make yourself another Mecha Titan later even if your initial one gets dealt with. You can also use a clone spell like Cackling Counterpart on the other end of this as well though if you want to. What I mean by that is by making a token copy of your Mecha Titan token, you know again that legendary 1010 that you're making, if you make a token copy of it and you sacrifice the original because you know again the legend rule, you actually are going to get that trigger to get all your things that you had exiled with it back, yet you still have a Mecha Titan in play. So then you can get any of those ETBs again that we discussed from things that you might have exiled and get some extra value there. Again, I'm not saying that you should build around in this way, it's again just something to keep in mind. And also while you're keeping that in mind, obviously consider things like Progenitor Mimic and Mechanized Production, which can make multiple token copies of it. So if you're really worried about losing your Mecha Titan core forever, well just keep making more and more copies of it so you can ensure that you make more and more Mecha Titans when needed. Regardless, if this card is in the 99 of one of your decks and you want to ensure that you can get it, well, you're going to need a good amount of tutors, so obviously there are plenty of ways that you can get it out. Consider cards like Word of Invention, Tribute Mage, and Inventor's Fair. Word of Invention is an instant with improvised so your artifacts can help cast it, and you can search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost X or less, put it on the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. Again, Mecha Titan Core has a very low converted mana cost, so what, this is going to be 5 mana in total, you know, 2 for that X, so improvising with your artifacts can help you cast this very quickly. And then of course, Tribute Mage has when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost 2, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library, and of course, Mecha Titan Core, again like I mentioned, has a mana cost of 2. And even a land like Inventor's Fair can help you out. By paying 4, you can tap and sacrifice it to go get an artifact card from your library, put in your hand, then shuffle your library. Activate only if you control 3 or more artifacts, though. In an artifact-centric deck, this is a very easy requirement to meet. That being said, when it comes to potential commanders for your Mecha Titan core, the first one that came to my mind was Arkham Dagson. He's a 2-2 human artificer that has tap target artifact creature's controller sacrifices it. That player may search the library for a non-creature artifact card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle the library. So Arkham Dagson is a fantastic commander that can utilize artifact creatures to sacrifice them and go search for any non-creature artifact. And again, of course, keep in mind that Mechanized Core is not a creature, well, until you crew it, but it is not a creature just inherently, so you can tutor up with this. Another commander that can tutor it up is the fantastic Oswald Philobender. He's a 2 2 gnome artificer that has pay a white, tap, sacrifice an artifact, search your library for an artifact card with mana value equal to 1 plus sacrifice artifacts mana value, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle, activate only as a sorcery. So this one can actually get you Mecha Titan Core very easily. I mean, you just need one artifact in play that has a mana value of 1. You sacrifice that, you go get your Mechanized Core, and you're good to go. And sorry, I think I just said Mechanized Core instead of Mecha Titan Core. My bad. It is quite early where I'm recording right now, and yeah, I'm going to be messing a few things up, so my apologies if I do that. Regardless, another commander that came to my mind was Psy Master Thopterist. Psy is a 1-4 human artificer that has, whenever you cast an artifact spell, create a 1-1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. So Psy can help you make a ton of artifact creatures. Again, anytime you cast an artifact, you are getting an artifact creature. So obviously, Mecha Titan Core is a very low to the ground artifact that can be very easy for you to cast and get some extra value out of it when Psy is in play. And then when you've got the mana for it and you're ready to actually get that Mecha Titan in play, just pay 5 mana, lose some Thopters, and there you go. And one final commander that I mentioned earlier is actually Shorakai Genesis Engine. Now, I want to mention that this card has not been confirmed to be an actual card, though it does seem to be very legitimate because, well, the actual picture of the card was on the back of one of the pre-cons, and it seemed pretty hard to actually fake that. That being said, again, please take that with a grain of salt because I have no way to actually confirm that this is a real card or not. And actually, the card that you're looking at is actually my custom version of it because the actual card picture was a bit too small to discuss. With all that said, again, this is that vehicle commander that I was mentioning earlier, an 80 vehicle for two white-blue. It has crew eight, and again, it does say that it can be your commander. 
It has pay one, tap, draw two cards, and discard a card. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless pilot creature token with this creature cruise vehicles as though its power were two greater. So obviously this is a fantastic vehicle tribal commander. And again, you could pretty much just put any vehicle tribal commander in here and be like, hey, you should probably include Mecha Titan Core in your deck because it is a fantastic vehicle with a lot of upside. It might start off small, but obviously it can make you a massive Mecha Titan, which is just, well, really flavorful, really cool, and really powerful. But now it's time for me to wrap things up and give you my final thoughts on Mech Titan Core. Uh, and actually, my apologies, um, I believe I might have misspoke for a lot of this episode and called it Mecha Titan Core, not Mech Titan Core. So yeah, my bad, it's early over here and I've only had on my first cup of coffee. Uh, apparently I need another one. Regardless, I think this is a really exciting card that a lot of players are going to be really excited to play. Obviously, you can just slam it into an artifact creature deck or a, you know, vehicle deck, but there are definitely going to be players out there, I believe, that are probably going to ask their playgroup if it's, if it's okay if they actually build around this as their commander, and I think a lot of playgroups out there are going to be okay with that. It's definitely not an overpowered card, but it is one that can do some powerful things, and again, there are some interesting interactions with it as well to consider. So yeah, I think this is a really exciting card that a lot of players are going to be excited about. And of course, for more exciting spoilers from Kamigawa, make sure you stay tuned to this channel for more quick takes. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.